It's about the restoration of our republic. We want to educate, encourage, enable the power. We stand for integrity, honesty, self-reliance, self-defense, and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. Good morning, America. You're listening to America's Voice Now. My name is Michael Evans, and I will be your host this morning, where we're going to cover a ton of topics. Looks like the wheels are coming off in a lot of different ways in a lot of different places. And I got to tell you, um, things are uh, looking dire indeed, not just domestically, but on a global scale. We are going to talk a little bit more about the Bundy Ranch and provide you with an update because apparently the BLM uh, slaughtered some cattle during the siege. It is illegal, unethical, cruel, and it was totally unnecessary. Where's PETA? The people eating tasty animals. I mean, uh, people against uh, our unethical treatment of animals or whatever their logo stands for. Where's the progressive liberal uh, group out there who would normally scream about animal rights? Where are the animal rights activists? Where's the government itself? If this was stewardship the wreckage that the BLM left behind. If this is stewardship of land, frankly, we can do without it. Is this what we call good government? What I call this is tyranny, and you should too. Because the animals that they killed are a stark reminder that this is how your government, and this is the way in which your government plans to deal with humans who get in their way too. Think that's too harsh? Tough. You can go watch Kim Kardashian or Communist News Network, and they'll give you the soft-pedaled lies. Go right ahead. That's entirely up to you. Or you can stick with us this morning, and you can get yourself awakened and aware to the harsh realities of a harsh and cruel world, full of tyrants, misfits, and, and quite honestly, psychopaths. And by the way, Emery, I'm not the only psychopath out there. We all are in a certain way. Second topic we're going to talk about this morning is Ukraine and how it shows a world tired of tyranny. It's not just here domestically in the United States. It's not just in the Ukraine. It's not just in countries that are fighting for liberty and freedom. It's everywhere, folks. It is a planet tired of being held down under the thumbs of a small few oligarchy uh, or a small few oligarchies that apparently feel as if it's their right to dictate the rules to everyone else. Our third topic this morning will be government's irresponsible failure to protect the grid and their irresponsible failure towards us. We hear constantly that this massive surveillance and the total surveillance system of the of of the dystopian world of 1984, is being done to protect us. It's for your safety, to, quote, keep you safe. And yet, last week, it emerged just from the Internet because the NSA completely missed it. So did the FBI. So did every other agency out there, the CIA, and all the rest of these three-letter curse words. They all missed the, the largest Al-Qaeda meeting in history. Trillions of dollars have been spent. Our privacy, our individual rights, our sovereignty as citizens diminished. All on claims that our government, which we now know can clearly, and we can clearly see has become our own worst enemy, will, quote, keep us safe. Yet they missed the largest gathering of real terrorists ever assembled. All that phone spying, all the internet listening, all the monitoring, all the hacking. And what do we have to show for it? 
They spend more time monitoring us than they do real enemies. We face a greater threat from our own national government, from Washington, D.C., and from your state capitals than we do from Islamic terrorists because they can't even track them, these terrorist organizations, when they're in vast herds. Utterly shameless. Absolutely irresponsible. And, and it just goes to show you that all of it is a sham designed to give you the false impression that government's doing this on your behalf. They're doing it for you instead of to you. Hello? See, the truth is they don't care about a collection of al-Qaeda in Yemen. What they're really interested in is how can we watch Ms. McGillicuddy so that if she speaks out against our government, we can sick Lois Lerner and the IRS on her. Oh, say you're not satisfied? Say you want more for your money? Tell you what I'm going to do. Emails exposed today by finally, and, and, and by the way, not by, not by any work from any of these traders in Washington. Judicial Watch actually pulled them out of the hat. Emails show that Lois Lerner was in contact with the Department of Justice about criminally prosecuting tax-exempt groups as a way to punish them, silence them, and use them as an example to silence others. That, ladies and gentlemen, is tyranny. That is treason. You can call it anything else you want. You can try to be politically correct about it, or you can just call it what it is. Our fourth topic, the regulation nation. Only slaves live under overseers. Free men do not. And yet, we have a an entire series of overseers who sit above us. You know who they are? You want me to name them? I'll give you just a sampling. Let's see. IRS, BLM, ATF, USDA, FCC, FTA, FTC, CIA, NSA, FBI, DHS, ICE, ICE, NPS. Need I go on? The list, is, the list just goes on. Ad infinitum, ad nauseum. They are willfully, intentionally, and maliciously purposed to injure American citizens, their families, your families, my family, and our businesses, small businesses, not the megalithic corporations that own them and the decisions they make that because they paid for them. This is the traitor inside the gates syndrome. What do I mean by that? This is where the trusted insider opens the gates in the dark of night to allow entrance to the barbarians. Nothing can justify or rationalize or legitimize what our national government has become. Every branch, every agency, every member must go. We can no longer hope for political solutions, ladies and gentlemen. They are a dream of the past. When will America say enough is enough? Let's get into our first topic. The Bundy Ranch exposes the utter, absolute use of a government agency as a weapon against the citizenry because he is the sheep or the cow, if you will, that lifted its head above the herd and questioned, questioned the tyranny. What tyranny you say? Well, how about represent, how about, how about um, failure to have representation from the government that is taxing you and regulating you to death? We fought a civil, or, I mean, a, a uh, revolutionary war over taxation without representation once before. Did we not? Of course we did. Yet I got to tell you, this example here, you know, I keep hearing the mainstream media, the Ministry of Propaganda. I watched it on Fox the other night. I watched it on, on uh, MSLSD. I watched it on Communist News Network. I watched it on CBS. I watched it on NBC. 
All of them do one thing. Even Hannity, who's had the Bundys on repeatedly, sitting there and cannot argue the point. They, none of them, whenever any, one of their guests says, but this land is owned by the federal government. Stop. That's where the argument lies. You see, they all want to use the same excuse, but he's acting against the law. But not a single one of them, not one, has ever said, well, wait a second, a law passed outside of congressional authority, I mean, uh, constitutional authority, a law which is passed, which is not on behalf of the Constitution, is no law at all. It is null and void. You can't have it two ways, folks. See, what they're giving you is not reporting. It's indoctrination. Like an article they posted out uh, on CBS about a Long Island high school students, two of them, who were suspended indefinitely, removed, basically expelled. They didn't want to use the word expelled, for displaying a Confederate flag. CBS, Channel 2 in New York. Catherine Brown, here's how her report went. There is outrage and disgust on Long Island. The African-American students who immediately saw it really exercised heroic restraint. And fortunately, a teacher immediately confiscated the flag and took the students out of the gym. That's the statement from Cregan, who is the, uh, I guess, the principal over there at the school. Let me tell you something. First of all, the, the kids who had the flag have just the same right of free speech as anyone else. It's not a hate crime to be unpopular. It's not a hate crime to have an unpopular opinion. It's not a hate crime to utilize unpopular speech. We hear it all the time. I hear it out of Chuck Schumer. I hear it out of Bloomberg. I hear it out of Obama. I hear it out of Michelle. I hear it out of Boehner. I hear it out of Cantor. I hear it out of McCain. I hear it every day. Doesn't mean I have a right to silence them. This isn't reporting, ladies and gentlemen, what we're hearing from the mainstream media. This is indoctrination. Irrespective of what anyone else wants to believe and what the media would, would, try, to, would try to manipulate your mind with, the Civil War was about states' rights and federal government overreach, even back then. Just like the coming Civil War number two will be about. The flag is part of our history. And it symbolizes a group of states who didn't want to be bled dry by scurrilous politicians who played favorites, picked winners and losers, and enriched themselves at the expense of others, not just individuals, but entire states. Slavery was a secondary issue. And the southern states had already agreed to disband it voluntarily in the future. No one teaches that now. The fake 14th Amendment didn't free anyone. Actually, what it did was it enslaved us all. The truth is, this government is become the enemy of of the state, the enemy of, of our state, the enemy of our state of being, the enemy of liberty, the enemy of freedom. When we talk about the example that's been given to us by the Bundys and the BLM's abuses of them, I got to tell you something. Why haven't any of these people in the mainstream media simply stated the obvious? When Nevada became a state and was no longer a territory, guess what? The land ceased to belong to the federal government. It's not federal government land. The federal government is prohibited by the Constitution from owning land. They own 10 square miles in Washington, D.C. And they own small and isolated locations, but only for the purposes of forts and other other federal needs within within the the ownership of the states. 84% of Nevada is not owned by the federal government. 84% of Nevada 
plus the additional 16%, is owned by the state of Nevada. It's not federal government land. The BLM, you know, while it's been given management, and it's been given management in an unauthorized fashion, where did we allow that to be to be looked upon and stated that that is that that an agency like the BLM has the rule of law to or, or the right to make law rules that are created by illegitimate federal agencies that have no constitutional authority or justification for their existence are no more valid than if i declare something to be a brand new law the law of mike think anybody's going to follow that Pshaw. The Constitution states very clearly that only Congress can make law. Rules and regulations that parade about as law that are passed by these unconstitutional agencies that are not fit or have authority to exist are created by a breached power of attorney, an invalid, illegal, null and void, or self-created power of authority and they have no consequence to either the Bundys, the state of Nevada or the nation as a whole the truth of the matter is ladies and gentlemen that what we have is an, another agency the Bureau of Land Management and the National Park Service who are for all intents and purposes Gestapo they are enforcers the secret police, if you will. No different than KGB. No different than brown shirts. Am I demonizing them? Hell yeah, you bet I am. And the truth is, it's time that you began to demonize them exactly the same way for what they are. To murder these cattle, what was the purpose of that? <clears throat> First and foremost, it was cruel. I mean, what did the cattle do? The cattle are, you know, they're they're dumb animals. All they know to do is eat and poop and occasionally re- procreate. That's it. What did these two prize bulls do? They didn't do anything. They were victims to punish Bundy. The BLM knew they were worth money. The BLM knew that they were valued by the family. So they injured them. They damaged them. They destroyed them. Then they went out on the property and they destroyed their water tanks. They punched holes in them. They destroyed the water lines themselves so that even if Bundy could get the cattle back onto the ground, he would not be able to retain them there because without water, the cattle would die. They destroyed the fences that were out there. They had complete control over the land for what? A week? Eight, ten days? In one week, ten days, whatever you want to call it, they caused more destruction out there than would have naturally occurred in 20 years. They justified spending $3 million on grazing fee to collect $1.1 million in grazing fees. Hello? They could have filed a lien on his ranch, but that wasn't good enough. They had to make an example to frighten the other sheep. They had to make an example to make sure that you knew no one can stand against us. They had no legal authority from the court. In fact, I don't know of any court order that would authorize them to commit the kind of damage they committed. I don't know how they they took the concept that they had a court order to mean that they could kill the cattle. Why would you kill that which you're allegedly collecting to pay off the debt? Why would you kill the value 
I mean, you don't, uh, you know, the IRS doesn't come and collect your money and then burn it, do they? They gave them the authority, an unconstitutional court gave them the authority to seize and impound Bundy's cattle, not seize and impound and destroy. One of the bulls was shot five times. Hello? Five times? You see, the problem, ladies and gentlemen, is that Bundy is just an example. And by the way, there are, I talked to you about the Hagee Ranch. If you're not familiar with it, that's, that's on you because you haven't done your research. But the Hagee Ranch has been fighting this same battle in U.S. versus Hagee. That's H-A-G-E. Now, I got to tell you, they've been fighting this for far longer even than Bundy. In fact, they know each other. It got so bad that the son of the original, the original um, uh, Wayne Hagee, he actually went to law school because he, he knew that that was the only way he was ever going to be able to continue to fight the battle. He couldn't afford the lawyers. He couldn't afford the court case. So he went to law school. And guess what? He won. Repeatedly. Has the BLM ever paid that debt? No, they won't. He's won a $4, four million dollar plus settlement. They won't pay it. The judge did find that Hagee, the, f- the father had in fact allowed his cattle to trespass on federal land. You know what he charged him for damages? $165.88. Not $1.1 million, $165.88. That's it. The truth of the matter is, the judge went so far as to state, and he's referred the people that were, that were terrorizing the Hagees to the Justice Department for prosecution. For their actions. Were they ever prosecuted? No. Nothing's happened. The Hagees were awarded $2.9 million because they took their water rights and $1.4 million in statutory compensation for improvements made in connection with the revoked grazing permit, including interest the total award amounted to $14.2 million. That was four years ago. They've never gotten their money. They've never been paid. So how is it that this same kind of thing goes on and over and over and over? Well, in our next segment, we're going to talk about how it's not just here in America that we're getting sick and tired of tyranny, but it's, it's on a global scale. The Ukraine shows us a world tired of tyranny. And according to at least one individual, may well be the beginnings of World War III. Edward Lucas makes it clear. We'll talk a little bit about it in just a moment. You're listening to America's Voice now. Please stick with us and ride with us this morning. We're covering some important issues, and I think that they're, they're valuable for you to be aware of. You can find us at americasvoicenow.org. We'll be right back. To America's Voice. My name is Michael Evans. Uh, you're joining us now in our second uh, segment this morning. Appreciate you out there. You're catching us live on AmericasVoiceNow.org. That's great news. I see a ton of folks out there, including Gerard. It looks like it might be somewhere up in, uh, I don't know, Upper Ohio, maybe. Uh, Johnsonville. Looks like South Carolina, maybe. Uh, let's see, Tuttle, Tuttle uh, might be Oklahoma, 
Palacius. Never heard of that. <laughs> Palacius. P L P A L A C I O S. Looks like it's down in Texas. Huntington. Never heard of that city. Palacius. Palacius. Hmm. Hello, Palacius. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate you. Um, we're going to talk in this segment about the Ukraine. And according to uh, more than one person, this is beginning to look like it may be the beginnings of World War III. And we may look back at this in history and say, like we look back now at World War I and the, um, the murder in Yugoslavia that basically kicked it all off, the assassination, I should say, which really, you know, shouldn't have been the cause of a global war, but yet dragged everyone into it. You see, the world, folks, is getting tired of tyrants. The world is people around the world. You know what? The psychopaths who run governments, you know, they seek to crush out... uh, Anyone who would argue their positioning, who would point it out, expose it. It's not limited just to foreign countries. It's going on right here. How do I know that? Well, Lois Lerner was trying to criminally prosecute anyone who disagreed with her positioning. That's no better than you would have gotten in the heyday of, <clears throat> of Soviet Russia. Soviet era Russia. And it's still going on. Putin, clearly a, a, a power hungry madman, is doing everything he can to one, strike back at the West, and two, solidify his own positioning and power, and that of his nation, Russia. But I got to tell you, you're not just seeing it limited only to the Ukraine and Russia. It's everywhere. It's all over Africa. It's all over South America. It's down in Mexico. It's all over Europe. There are a couple of groups that are religiously driven to insanity, and I specifically point to the Islamic terrorists and the Islamic extremists who believe that a theocracy of madmen running a global planet full of sheep is the, is the ultimate, the ultimate uh, Valhalla, the ultimate utopia on earth. But it's not just limited to religious fanaticism. There's ideological fanaticism. There's just sheer psychopaths who who seek power. That's why, you know, despite all of the arguments that you hear and all of the comments that you've heard from from every every, uh, Miss America, Miss Universe about... I seek to incorporate world peace. You'll never have it. Because it only takes one nutcase to set off those who are on the edge. Edward Lucas writes in the Daily Mail, I hope I'm wrong, but historians may look back and say that this was the beginning of World War III. Vladimir Putin is striking at the heart of the West. We can choose to surrender any responsibility we have to protect the Ukraine and the Baltic states, or we can mount a last-ditch attempt to deter Russia from furthering its imperial ambition. If we choose to resist Putin, we risk a terrifying military escalation. He goes on to say that, I do not think it's an exaggeration to say that this could bring us to the brink of nuclear war. And I would agree. And I'll tell you why. Because humans have this thing that is 
ultimately destructive. It's called pride. And it's what causes two nations to go to war knowing that millions will be killed because they don't want to lose face. What's happening right now in the Ukraine and what started out to be protests from individuals who were tired of being oppressed and repressed. I mean, the Ukrainian government was clearly a puppet government for Russia. And the people were tired of it. And when they sought to ally themselves with the West in an effort to claim a bid for freedom, their leadership said, no, we're going to ally with Russia, despite what all of you want. I'm not saying that the West <clears throat> is good for the Ukraine either, because the West is run by the International Monetary Fund, the IMF. It's run by the psychopaths in Britain and the psychopaths in the United States. <laughs> I mean, really, folks, think about it. The dogs of war are howling. But they're not howling only in the Ukraine. And they're not howling only in the Middle East, where people seek freedom from religious oppression, religious insanity. I mean, really. Look at the Saudis where you can't even drive a car if you're a woman, where, where women are given such a, abusive treatment. I mean, it's unconscionable. It really is. Where, I mean, it's, it's, it's insane. No one can condone that. And, they're, and, and worse yet, they're killing each other and then blaming us for it. <laughs> I mean, you got the, the Sunnis and the Shiites, and they're killing each other and then blaming us for it. It's an internal religious battle. The world's just full of psychopaths. <laughs> All people want is to be left alone to do the best they can with the resources, the skills, the God-given talents that they've been given. To be able to take their wetware, right? And be able to function with that as best they can to create, devise, and, and profit and, and benefit themselves and their families with the, with the gift that they've been given. Whatever that gift may be. Everybody's got one. But that's not good enough for some people. They're not just satisfied with their own improvement. Humanity is flawed beyond belief because of this problem. And it has been the cause of strife through all of known history from the time that man ever literally sentiently stepped foot, one foot in front of the other. It has been the destructive force in every society, between every nation. I'm not some utopian who says, well, we can all live in a you know happy little commune here and share and share alike, because that doesn't work. Humanity is too selfish for that. And and we're intended to be. We're not a, we're not, I mean, we're community driven. But we're not a collective. We don't herd well. You know, what, but why should you be prohibited from, from utilizing the gifts that you've been given to improve your personal situation? Not at the expense of others, but 
using the gifts that you have to expand and extend your own positioning. You don't have to take advantage of someone else in order to be successful individually. One, and I'm talking about just in terms of your own life and and in your own fiscal arena, but in addition to that, your own self-gratification. You don't have to take advantage of someone else to be satisfied with who you are and what you've accomplished. It doesn't have to be that way. Only weak individuals or flawed individuals will do that, will prey upon others to enhance their position. Weak because they're unwilling to put the the magnificent talents that they have and and apply them to their, their own situation and improve it by hard work. It's easier to just go get it from somebody else. And we don't have... You know, this isn't limited only, by the way, to, to, to political people and, and politicians and religious leaders and, and, and you know, heads of state and, and people who... It, it also incorporates the people that run the agencies. They're just little tyrants. But it also incorporates the helpless. The, the helpless by choice. The hapless. They're just too dagnab lazy to go do what needs to be done. Now, you know, whether whether they've been indoctrinated to a level of dependency or whether it's, you know, there's always been the lazy. And there, I guess, always will be. Just like there's always been the insane. Just like there's always been the, the psychopath who seeks power for power's sake, who seeks money beyond all reason. Does it really make anybody happy? Look at the people around you. Look at the people who are, are, are wealthy and, and known to be wealthy. Are they really happier? I mean, really, are they happier? Does stuff make you happy? Most people in the world know it doesn't. But we're, you know, for whatever reason, we consistently are, are deluged with, it, it just comes at us in a torrent, like out of a fire hose. We can't get away from that indoctrination. And even when we know it to be false, we can't get away from the influence of it. It's a failing of the planet. at least the humans that exist on it. You know, Ukraine is coming apart at the seams. Yes, it was poorly run. Yes, it's bankrupt. But that's not the fault of the Ukrainian individuals, the families that are just out there trying to survive. That's the fault of the people who were running it. Why is the world in such utter disastrous shape right now it's not because you know the guy who goes out there and works hard every day and tries to you know do his job and come home and take care of his family it's not the guy who's trying to run a small business and is just out there seeking to give himself some personal security and make sure his children have enough and that he can you know put them through school as an example or make sure that they're taken care of in the event something were to happen to him or her It's not the farmer who's out there every day just trying to make that farm produce food that he can feed his own family and make a little bit of money on in the community. It's the people who exist on the work and the, and the, and the, on others, the production of others. What do these people produce? Look at any of them. Pick anyone you want. Take Putin. Take Obama. Take Lois Lerner. What do these people produce? Nothing but acrimony and angst and unhappiness. 
They produce hatred. They don't produce anything. Nothing of value at any rate. They have no virtue. There is no benefit that they provide to the collective value of of humanity. Certainly, you're not getting anything from it. I'm not receiving anything from it. I mean, we've spent how many trillions of dollars? None of it produced by anyone in this administration. In the last five years, we've spent $7 trillion. If you do the math and you break that out over the total population, every person, every man, woman, and child in the nation has invested $25,000 to make that happen. What have you got to show for your twenty-five grand? Nothing. The twenty-five thousand that you should that that's your share has been funneled by political operatives and and madmen and mad women and monsters into either their own coffers or the coffers of their friends and their cronies. You know, there it's a tight knit click, and you ain't in it. It's reprehensible. It's reprehensible that there are so many predators out there. But you know, the difference between a predator of humanity and a predator of nature are stark. There are very, very, very few animals in the natural kingdom that kill for pleasure. Very few. The vast majority kill what they need to kill, prey upon what they need to prey upon, but only for the purposes of of their own survival. They don't decimate. The wolf doesn't kill just for pleasure. The snake doesn't bite and kill an animal with poison just for pleasure. It does it in either defense or to eat. That's it. And they don't abuse the resource. I mean, they, they, yes, of course, they have to kill the rabbit to eat it. But they don't kill all the rabbits. The insanity of higher intelligence is that it breeds this this ill-natured cruelty. And frankly, you know, it, it it takes a certain mindset to have that 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 failure to be empathic or even sympathetic with the plight of those which you're taking advantage of to gain your own personal improvement. That is, ladies and gentlemen, where the, where the flaw lies. You know, it's no different than a person who walks by and steals money from a blind beggar. Really. And someone who doesn't need it. I mean, come on. It's just malicious. Because I can And what you have is, is people in authority and power who, are, who gra- they gravitate towards that power because it enables them to misuse it for their own personal improvement. Just like it takes a certain person with a mindset to go into you know, a, a, a unique brain surgery, as an example, in medicine. Just like it takes a certain person and a certain mindset to be willing to become a nun or someone who will sacrifice their own personal interest for the benefit of others, it takes a certain mindset to sacrifice your benefit for their own personal value or improvement. 
We're never going to get away from that. Even if we throw off the tyrants on the planet, if Putin could be vacuumed off the face of the planet tomorrow morning, if Barack Obama could be vacuumed off, it wouldn't change because the next Barack Obama, the next Vladimir Putin would arise to fill their shoes. You can remove the head of the BLM. The next one will step in and they will become drunk with their power even though they were sober when they walked into the position. You have to think and realize that power, especially government power, is like going into a bar. You walk in and you're sober. And when you do, you're the only one sober in the room. You walk in and you say, you ever go out to, with your friends and, and you're not drinking and you see they are all well into their cups? What happens? You look at those people and you say, man, these people act like idiots. Now, if you're drunk among them, you don't notice that not only are they acting like idiots, but you're likely acting the same way. But when you are sober, when you walk into the room, you say, wow, you look around you and you say, my goodness, what's wrong with this picture? These people are acting like absolute fools. They're obviously drunk. And it won't be long if you stay in the room long enough and you begin to imbibe with them that you become like them. You've been listening to America's Voice. My name is Michael Evans. You can communicate with me via email at uh, mike at americasvoicenow.org. That's mike at americasvoicenow.org. Dot org. Please ride with us for a moment. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, we have, a, uh, we have a, um, a little commercial break we're going to do, and then we're going to come back and we're going to tackle the next topic, which is government's irresponsible failure to protect our grid and to protect us as they claim to be doing and spending trillions upon it. And yet we're less secure now than we have ever been. Not only from outside, but from within. Stick with us. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in just a moment. If you're watching the stream live on America's Voice Now, just ride with us. It'll take us about a minute and a half, and you can click the play button. We'll be right back on. You're listening to America's Voice Now. Uh, make sure that you visit our sponsors. Uh, please support these folks because they are the ones who um, make sure that we are on the air, especially on terrestrial broadcast radio. Uh, you know, these guys uh, really have stepped up to the plate, and they make sure that we, we are retained there. So please patronize them. You can visit uh, uh, my friend Jason over at Wits End Classic Barbershop and get yourself a great haircut over there. He charges 10 bucks for a haircut. He does that uh, old-style straight uh, razor uh, shave and the, the whole nine yards. Hot towel. Kind of a treat. Uh, you got Father's Day coming up. Perfect opportunity for you to take your father or your husband or your significant other uh, and go down there, maybe your granddad, and take them down there and give them a treat. Take them down for a treat and get them uh, taken care of over at Wits End Classic Barbershop. While you're there, you can slip into the back and you can go to the Patriot Cigar and Tobacco Shop, which is right behind the barbershop. There, you can get, uh, if they're a smoker, uh, if they are into a tobacco of any kind, you can get, and even if they only have an occasional cigar, get them a nice cigar and treat them to a nice day. If you're interested in having a, uh, a wedding party of some sort or a, um, uh, some kind of an event coming up, they have a facility there where they've got large screen TVs and the cigars and all the accessories and pipe tobaccos and all kinds of things. You can rent the place for a private party, and it would be an outstanding opportunity to do something unique and different. If you're getting married shortly, you can have not only a bar, but you could have a cigar bar there. How unique is that? You can call them at 417-257-1776 to get more details and information. You're listening to America's Voice. We'll be back in just a moment, and we will continue with our show. It's about 
about the restoration of our republic. We want to educate, encourage, enable the power. We stand for integrity, honesty, self-reliance, self-defense, and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. Good morning, America. You're listening to America's Voice Now. My name is Michael Evans, and I am your host this morning. You're joining us halfway through our program. We broadcast live every day from 8 a.m., until about 9.45, and um, we encourage you to join us live on our website at americasvoicenow.org. You can catch the show there live on both audio and or video, whichever is your preference. Um, You don't necessarily have to look at my uh, radio-styled face. (laughs) If you want to uh, just listen, you can do that. We have a, uh, a podcast that plays it live. It's by Spreaker. And uh, if you have an opportunity to, you can join, uh, you can go to Spreaker and you can actually uh, even download the program. They also have a mobile phone app where you can uh, listen at your leisure and at your convenience. If you want to just download the program for the day and then listen at some time later on when it's more convenient for you, uh, you can do that as well. If you'd like to visit that website, and I would encourage you to do that and then hit the follow button because we're almost at 100 listener, 100 followers there. We just started using Spreaker a short time ago, and it's been an outstanding uh, medium for, for, the, uh, for the program. About, I don't know, three to f- anywhere between three and 500 people a day listen to the program that way. Uh, they download the podcast and what have you. And um, you can go there by going to Spreaker.com forward slash user forward slash America's Voice Now. The idea behind that is that when you go to Spreaker, you can download the program as a podcast and just save it on your computer and listen to it at your leisure or on your cell phone. You can also download their application from either the iPhone uh, store or the Android store, um, and then you can simply uh, search for America's Voice Now or Michael Evans or both, and um, then it'll give you a breakdown of every show that we've done. You can listen to them in series or in order or out of order or whatever you'd like. Um, you can also catch us on Patriot FB every morning. Patriot FB is a website that is, um, for all intents and purposes, like Facebook, but without all of the, uh, the, the censorship and, the, and the, the, you know, the nonsense. There's no trolls on there. And... Um, this program streams there live, and then after, after uh, AVN, you have uh, Tom LaCavara with Resurrect the Republic, and then from 2 to 4, you have the outstanding and amazing J.J. McCartney. I encourage you to listen to Patriot FB Radio, because in between the news talk uh, and, and the radio programs, there's also music and so forth. So I think you'll find that it's an excellent way to spend your, uh, to spend your time. You'll learn all kinds of great stuff, and at the same point in time, you'll have an opportunity to meet like-minded individuals who are also members there, just like Facebook, but with a lot of bennies. There's another website I'd like you to check out. It's called constitutionclub.ning.com. That's constitutionclub.ning.com. The Constitution Club has a unique feature I really like, and that is they've created a little mini website for every one of the 33 or 3,400 counties in the United States. That's how many counties there are. The idea is that like-minded individuals who live close can become uh, knowledgeable and familiar with each other. They may not know who each other is. And you may live right across town or right across the, the you know, whatever, a mile away, maybe a block away, and you don't even know that your neighbor is a similarly-minded individual that you'd like to get to know better on a personal basis. It's a great way to network in your own community. And they have tons of great content out there. So, okay, <clears throat> let's tackle our, our topic this morning, which is government irresponsible uh, or irresponsibility in its failure to protect us from risks to our grid. Now, this is not, you know, only a risk from um, humans, but it's also a natural issue. 
Um, we know that there can be many natural causes that would bring a grid down, not the least of which is unusual solar activity, uh, a, natural, a natural disaster, a major earthquake, floods, all kinds of things. The problem is that our grid, our power grid, which, quite frankly, we all rely upon far more than I think most of us realize, is vulnerable in so many different ways. Because once it goes, and once there is a, a, a large section of it taken out, it becomes like a domino effect. And Congress has been made aware of this now for well over a decade. Back in the mid-90s, they were educated about how dangerous the risk was to um, either intentional or unintentional through natural disaster uh, damage to the grid and how it could snowball. They were warned that a foreign, a foreign uh, enemy could disable the grid with something like an, e an EMP type style of attack, uh, which is a, you know, an electromagnetic pulse type attack. It's kind of like a, a nuclear weapon detonated at very, very high atmospheric, above the atmosphere um, uh, heights. And then basically it creates a, a, um, an electromagnetic pulse that fries all electronics. And there are, you know, there, there's, there's only so much you can protect from that perspective. But there are other methods. I mean, a lot of folks don't know that it was only a couple of months ago when in California someone or some group of ones literally laid outside of a fence, outside of a... Uh, a uh, an electric facility and shot up all of the the uh, transformers that were in it i mean they spent at least 20 minutes there now these these huge power uh stations and transfer stations and transmission facilities are generally not located right in the middle of population centers for a number of reasons one they're big and ugly and two they don't have to be and <clears throat> they require a certain amount of land and so you know these are those big, ugly power generation facilities that you see, not generation, but uh, transfer facilities that you see with all the, you know, the big boxes and the crazy looking wire and all of that. Some group, and they think it's probably more than one individual, literally sat there and target practiced for about 20 minutes and disabled a whole bunch of these transformers, which, quite frankly, they only caught at the, at the nick of time to keep it from creating these massive cascading failures that would have ran through the entire grid in California. It's not the only time that it's happened. It's been happening around the country, but they're keeping it secret. The truth of the matter is, the grid would be easy for terrorists to disrupt. Not only in a physical manner like that by, you know, using, taking out uh, very clearly uh, uh, targeted areas and, and, and multiple backstops so that, you know, you, when, they try to, when they try to pause the, the, the domino effect, it, it fails, right? And the cascade continues. But it could also be, you know, any number of natural issues. I mean, we've had solar activity uh, in the United States and, and around the world that, could easily knock down huge portions of the grid. Could be something like a massive earthquake. I mean, the New Madrid series of faults that are in the Midwest, right along the Mississippi River. Were that to, were that to uh, slip and a major earthquake were to occur there, you would create a cascading power brownout or blackout that would ripple across both sides, you know, from, from the Mississippi West and from the Mississippi East. Congress has been made aware of it. They know about it. They've been given all the information about it. They've been given repeated studies about how they can protect the grid and therefore you from it. And yet they sit impotent like eunuchs on their hands. The cost of doing it has been estimated at somewhere between two and five billion dollars. That would one would imagine that's a relatively small price to pay. I mean, in the day when we're in, in the days when we have one trillion dollar annual budgets, 
Five billion dollars is like Bill Gates pulling a dime out of his pocket and flicking it over. The Senate can't account for five billion dollars they lost last weekend, like you lost a, a contact lens. But they won't come up with it. Why? Because there's nothing political in it for them. <laughs> Frankly, that's the real reason, ladies and gentlemen. They could mandate that the power utility companies do something about it. They could assist them. The power companies are lobbying Congress heavily not to take action. They say, we can't afford it. The truth is, they're not going to afford it. They're going to pass the bill on to you anyway. Who are we kidding here? All they're going to do is jack your electric rates. And... I might add to you, and I posted this up on our website at at AVN and uh, Facebook page and and Patriot FB and all the rest. Electricity prices have surged to an all-time record for March. The average price of a kilowatt hour of electricity hit 13.5 cents. That's up 5.5% from March of 2013 last year. 5.5% in one year. Why? Why? Well, you need to understand that these agencies that run our government, and and by the way, you know, Congress only passes a few hundred laws a year. It's the administrative agencies that pass the multiple tens of thousands of regulations and rules, which are, in fact, they are de facto law, but are illegal and unconstitutional. But the problem that we've got with this electri- electrical issue here is in large part generated by the EPA, who is <clears throat> demonizing the use of coal when we don't have an alternative. Listen, the argument for this, folks, is very simple. The environmentalists say, we've got to stop coal. And we say, well, okay, here's, here's the realistic argument. And I can sum it up very shortly for you. Until we have an alternative solution that is viable fiscally and viable from a production standpoint, no. How's that? Until wind, until water, until solar, until alternative systems are capable of producing the electricity required, the answer is no. You don't quit one job until you've got another. That's not how it works. Not in a realistic, logical, well-reasoned world. I get it. You want clean air. I get it. You want clean water. You, we all do. But shutting down power plants on a perceived false science like climate change science, which has been commissioned, not truly real science, it's all, it's all based on a lie. And even if it wasn't, then release the alternative solutions to better energy production and we'll be more than happy to stop using coal. In fact, if the truth was, if the truth be known, if there was a better alternative to coal, one that was more efficient or less expensive to produce, coal would see, go the way of the buffalo as a natural extension. Could be natural gas. Oh, but we can't drill that because, dagnabbit, there's mosquitoes and tortoises and grasshoppers and some kind of bird that are going to be injured if we draw the gas out of the ground. (laughs) Well, natural gas burns very clean, folks. I mean, look, it's all a scam. The truth is, our Congress has failed us. And they have failed the ability to protect us from terrorist attack, whether that be a physical attack like an EMP or bullets and transformers or a software hack. Also, very easy and open. 
The truth is that it just proves my point to you that government is not really concerned ultimately about you. They are self-absorbed. And anything that does not have a direct benefit in their in their personal sphere is a non-issue. Let me just give you an example of how big this problem is, because this isn't from an article in the LA Times. There are there have been a number of members of Congress who want to uh, force regulators to uh, make specific security upgrades at different facilities and to put in in place in between these uh, transmission points and uh, generation plants circuit breakers, if you will. But <laughs> they can't seem to get past the political one-upsmanship, the gridlock. This article goes on to say that the magnitude of the problem is underscored by concerns that are raised by insurance giants Lloyd's of London, which is known for a willingness to insure pretty much anything. Lloyd's appraisers have been making a lot of visits lately to power companies, seeking protection against the risks of cyber attack, among others. Their takeaway? Security is about half, uh, security at about half the companies they visit is too weak for even Lloyd's to offer a policy. See, the real problem here, folks, is that no one's willing to do the right thing unless there's something in it for them. And that's tragic. That's, that's tragic. That's irresponsible. That's unconscionable. We put government in place. We gave them a limited power of attorney to act on our behalf. Not to, not to willfully and intentionally and maliciously injure us for their own personal gain, for their own political power, for their own financial gain. And they have become the traitors inside the gates. That's what, the, that's what this is. We have a group of people who, for all intents and purposes, consider governance their personal their personal uh, area of of oligarchy. I guess that's the simplest way I can put it. Their entire world revolves around them ascribing more power to themselves, usurping greater power, greater authority, utilizing it for their own personal gain, whether that be financial or career or any other method or any other uh, end result. And ultimately, they don't have the right motives here. The right motives here are, I don't want to hear how this is going to make your voters construe you back home. I don't care how the party is going to disagree with your positioning on this. This is a crisis, and these buffoons are sitting there, inept, incompetent, impotent, twiddling their thumbs while Rome is ready to burn. And it's inexcusable. Frankly, i got to tell you something. And I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm just going to throw this out there. But if there is a scenario in which our electrical grid is damaged in some way, shape, or form, either by natural or man-made injury, I've got to tell you, that should be the motivating factor for every American to charge every member of government, every one of them, with treason, and remove them permanently from ever becoming powerful again. You see, they're there in order for them to do the right thing for you. 
when they have perverted that, they've perverted the trust, then there is, it is the, it is the ultimate sin. It is the unforgivable sin. Because when power in this nation goes out and the, the, the people start dying in droves, in the first 30 days, ladies and gentlemen, we would lose at least 10, if not 20% of our population. Think about it. If the power went out on a national level, it, within 30 days, we'd lose 20% of our population. That would qualify every member of government in any role, any position, anywhere, anyhow, for removal, a label of dishonorably discharged at best, and a charge of treason with a punishment of death for those most responsible. There you go, folks. Oh, I know that'll never make the mainstream media, but it oughta. The truth is, if every other talking head, if every other political pundit out there put the real truth in front of the nation, that's how we deal with it. That's how your founding fathers would have explained it to you. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about regulation nation. Only slaves live under overseers. Not free men. Not free women. Only slaves. And this nation has more regulation than any other nation in the world. The land of the free, the hell you say, the home of the brave, only if you stand up and take it back, by force if necessary. We'll talk about it in just a moment. You're listening to America's Voice now. Ride with us. We're going to take a break for a minute and a half, or one minute, and then we'll come back. If you're watching us on America's Voice now live uh, on the video, just pause, for, wait, wait for a minute or so, and then hit the play button again, and you'll come right back on. You're listening to America's Voice now. Please make sure that you visit our sponsors and support those folks. Uh, the law offices of Jason Henry, he specializes in uh, state and federal law, whether it be a criminal matter, whether it be a civil matter. He also handles uh, a specialty in firearms cases, whether it be a state firearms charge or a criminal case or whether it's a federal case and you're, you're a felon who's been, or you know, maybe you've been charged as a felon in possession or a prohibited person in possession, something along those lines. Maybe you've had your firearms rights taken from you. Uh, give him a call at 417-256-4100. He also works uh, with a lot of individuals on family law. So if you're, uh, I mean, something as simple as getting a divorce or something as complicated as child custody, you can give him a call and he'll be more than happy to help you out. 417-256-4100, the law offices of Jason Henry. Make sure that you visit our friends over at Pizza Hut on Porter Wagoner Boulevard. That's a group that literally sponsors us outside of their corporate arena. They only cover, they only advertise uh, with us because they support what we do. Make sure that you visit them. Today is Thursday, so it's reduced lunch price day. Uh, it's lunch for five bucks. Tuesdays and Thursdays, they have reduced price lunch. But then on Tuesday night, it's kids under 12 eat free. America's Voice Now. My name is Mike Evans. I am your host this evening, or this morning, or this evening if you're listening to us on Patriot FB. I'm sorry, on uh, Big Country 99. Um, our program does uh, repeat on Big Country 99. That's uh, Rooster Radio and uh, plays there from midnight to 2 a.m. So if you are in our uh, broadcast area, which is huge, um, please, by all means, listen to that program and refer your friends. If you're a, uh, a business person in the community and you'd like to advertise with us, 
uh, on Big Country 99, please contact me via email. You can send me an email to Mike at America's Voice Now dot org. And um, we'll be more than happy to put together an advertising package that covers you not only during the broadcast of our show, but we've got a great advertising package that gives you about four or five spots during the course of the day, five days a week. So uh, take advantage of it. It's the least expensive radio package you'll ever find. I cannot uh, recommend it strongly enough. And every one of our advertisers uses it. So it's definitely worthwhile. This particular segment, this is our last segment of the morning. We're going to talk about the regulation nation. And we've become this monster of regulation that is really uh, an enslavement of every one of us. Whether you're in business or you're just, you know, a Joe Sixpack going out there and working, you know, the hard grind every day, and you bring your lunch in a, in a lunch pail, the regulation that exists in our government today and the amount of rules and regulations under which we live in that are all, in, for all intents and purposes, de facto law well, there's no other nation in the world that has them. We have the highest level of prisoners in prisons and jails in the world. Let me explain something to you and give you a startling statistic. 25% of all the people who are incarcerated around the planet are in the United States. 25% of all the prisoners held in all the jails in all the world are right here on U.S. soil. And yet we're only 5% of the total population of that same planet. Now, how do you explain and justify the phrase, the land of the free, when we have such a disproportionate share of human beings incarcerated? when we have literally tens of millions of Americans who are felons, second-class citizens, as it were, who are criminals based on a bunch of laws that were passed by a bunch of administrative agencies that have no justification under our Constitution. This president is the king of illegal unethical, immoral regulation. These agencies that pass these rules and regulations are being used as a weapon against the citizens that are under assault from our own government, state and federal. I'm not leaving your state government out of this. Don't make the mistake of thinking they are not the same tyrannical mindset as your federal government. In fact, in large part, they work hand-in-hand hand with your tyrannical federal government, and they have been promised a seat at the table, shall we say. That's why they've capitulated to allow the federal government to usurp their Tenth Amendment sovereignty that is constitutionally guaranteed but they've waived it. With your permission? Heck no. They just did it on their own because the people in power got something for it. The EPA, the IRS, the Bureau of Land Management, the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, USDA, the FCC, the FTA, the FTC, the CIA, the NSA, the FBI to the DOJ, the DHS, ICE, the National Park Service. The list, ladies and gentlemen, goes on and on and on. Ad infinitum, ad nauseum. There are literally hundreds upon hundreds of federal agencies that pass rules and regulations that really are being used willfully intentionally, with malice aforethought, arbitrarily, capriciously, and maliciously intended to injure Americans, your families, and our businesses. 
That's the simple truth of it. Everything else that you hear is a lie. Everything else you hear is propaganda. That's the truth. These federal agencies have grown so disproportionately powerful. There's an article in the Wall Street Journal in, in which they pretty clearly outline it. Their opening, their opening sentences, anyone wondering why the U.S. economy can't seem to grow at its usual pace should examine one product category where production is actually booming, federal regulation. Washington set a new record in 2013, issuing final rules that consume 26,417 pages in the Federal Register. For those of you who don't know what the Federal Register is, I encourage you to educate yourself. It's the book of rules. It's the rule book. While plenty of government employees deserve credit for this milestone, leadership does matter. And by this measure, President Obama has never been surpassed in the Oval Office. He is unprecedented, to use his favorite word. The latest rulemaking tally comes from the uh, uh, Competitive Enterprise Institute, who on April 29th will publish an annual review of federal regulation in 10,000 Commandments, quote-unquote. That's the name of it. It's an important work because politicians and the media treat regulation as a largely cost-free public good, but it's not. Congress might be mired in gridlock, but the federal bureaucracy is busier than ever. In 2013, the Federal Register contained 3,659 final rules, which means they must now be obeyed. It also incorporated 2,594 proposed rules on their way to becoming orders from political headquarters. Now, let me explain to you something. Our Constitution is very clear that there is no authorization for government or anyone in government with one exception to pass law, and that is Congress. And yet Congress has usurped or abdicated and passed on through a breached contract of uh, uh, power of attorney the power for all of these agencies to make decisions and to make rules and regulations that are not legal. I've got to tell you, folks, it's, it's beyond comprehension that these, that, that, most people don't even understand and recognize the reality of what these of what these criminals and they are criminals are doing they are passing laws and 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 regulations that they have no authority to make the truth is that these rules are produced not for the benefit of anyone, but simply to solidify power. It's illegitimate. And every federal agency is illegitimate. There's only two that have authorization to exist, ICE and Border Patrol and Customs. That's it. The rest of them have no right to exist. They have no excuse for living. Their existence is a an abomination. They are, their existence is evil because it is clearly in direct opposition to the Constitution. They are no more valid, nor are their decrees and their rules and their regulations which are passed in mountains than as if I made a declaration and said, this is the new rule of the land. Who would follow that? No one, of course. So why would you follow it any more from an administrative agency like the EPA or the FDA or the FCC than you would if I made it? The Constitution is clear and states that only Congress can make law. 
rules and regulations that parade about as law, passed by agencies that are created by a breached power of attorney contract, are invalid, illegal, null, void, and of no consequence to you or anyone in this nation. Last year, the Federal, Regula- the Federal Register was 79,311 pages. But guess what? That wasn't the biggest year. The biggest year was 2010 under Obama's regime. The all-time record was 81,405 pages. There are, for the record, in 2014, right now, 3,305 brand new regulations that are moving through the pipeline that are on their way to being imposed upon you. And let me clarify for you why that's important. Because 191 of those are what's called commercially significant. Now, in the language of a trader in Washington, let me tell you what commercially significant means. These are rules which are considered to be significant because they have a cost of at least $100 million a year to the public. Economically significant. Commercially significant. $100 million bucks a year. That's the quantifier. And out of the 3,300 that are on their way to us, 200 of them are considered that. That's not counting the 10,000 that have been passed before that, that are just like it. And by the way, I want you to know something. There are 200 that are on their way that are considered economically significant. But bear in mind something. They, th- those figures of what constitutes economically significant and those that meet the threshold of economically significant are organized and created by a group of individuals that consistently lowball the impact and the real impact in the real world. So the truth is, it may not really be 200. It may be 300, 500, or more. The overall cost and this is part of the study that was done that that, uh, Wall Street Journal is drawing their information from here. The the article was written by a guy by the name of Cruz. So in case you hear me mention his name, you'll understand where it's coming from. Drawing largely on government statistics, Cruz estimates that the overall cost of regulatory compliance and its economic impact is $1.9 trillion annually. You're kidding me. $1.9 trillion. Ladies and gentlemen, that's higher than our budget. The cost of regulatory compliance. This is lost productivity. This is lost revenue opportunity. This is the cost of enforcement the cost and the burden placed upon taxpayers, some of it's tangible, some of it's intangible, some of it's physical hard cost, i.e. the cost of all of the law enforcement that we're prisoners under. But it's also the lost productivity. It's the loss of, of, of the, the companies that flee the United States because the small businesses, I'm not talking about the, the, the uh, mega internationals, I'm talking about the small businessman who says, I can't open and run a business here because the EPA or, or some other regulatory agency that oversees my business demands I get a license and then comes down and makes me do the most hor- horrific, insane things to be in business. So it's easier for me to either produce the product somewhere else or to not be in business at all. The burden of complying with all of these federal rules costs roughly the annual GDP of Australia, Canada, or Italy. 
Now, for the record, our GDP in this country is roughly $16 trillion. $16 trillion. So one-eighth of our productivity, of our GDP, is lost to meet regulations that empower a small group of oligarchs who, frankly, I mean, look, the, the truth of the matter is that all of the issues that we have, all the problems that we have could be solved by eliminating, or, or mostly solved, by eliminating this regulation. Because, you see, the regulations are designed to, over, to, to be a duplication of that which, frankly, you know, most of the stuff that we deal with that's a problem through this regulation, that it is a real risk for the country, can be dealt with by states through criminal prosecutions. Now, how do I mean that? Well, okay, we have... First of all, you have all of these uh, issues like the Clean Air and the Clean Water Act and the EPA is usurping everybody's power, stealing everyone's land over that. Well, the truth of the matter is, if you simply passed a a law that said any corporation, so let's just deal with corporations for a moment. We're not talking about the guy who spills a a, a quart of oil and it leaches into the groundwater supply. I, I mean, that's a problem, and I'm not suggesting that it's not. But I am talking about, you know, I'm talking about corporations now who, you know, collectively do far more damage uh, to the environment, both water and air and, and every other aspect, than, you know, all of the individuals combined. So let's just attack that for a moment. If you went and you said to a company, here's the way this is going to work. If you intend to employ a practice that places our environment at risk, we're not going to fine you. We're not going to turn around and slap you on the wrist and hit you with a, a one, you know, a one billion dollar fine. If you intend to um, rape the public through some financial scam and some, uh, you know, shell game that you want to do on Wall Street, we're not going to fine you. We're not going to play games with you. What we're going to do is we're going to take your entire executive staff, and we're going to take every member of your board, and we're going to incarcerate them. Because you are responsible for what your ship and your sailors on your ship do. Now, going forward, this is how it works. If you are the head of a corporation and your underlings do some dirt, they do some damage to the environment, you are going to pay to clean it all up. But in addition to that, you're going to jail for a minimum of, let's say, 20 years. You want to see how fast... A, a paint manufacturer would stop pouring some kind of chemical into a local stream or a river. It would be overnight. The problem would be solved immediately, if not sooner. If corporations, according to this government, have First Amendment human rights, then somebody human had better be able to go to jail. And that's how the problem would stop. If you want to be a Wall Street bigwig, that's great. But when we catch you defrauding the public, when we catch you playing a scam, we're not going to fine you. When we catch you laundering money for a terrorist organization, including the DEA, by the way, which was laundered by HSBC. Hello, one of the biggest banks, $400 million that hit the press for about a week, a year and a half ago, and then fell off the radar and nobody's heard from it since, scrubbed off of every press organization, scrubbed everywhere. Nobody heard about it. The DEA, yes, the largest drug dealer on the planet, laundering money through banks. When we catch you doing that, we're not going to sit there and we're going to say, okay, you laundered $4 billion and we're going to fine you $2 billion because they made $6 billion doing it. We're going to take you out and put you in front of a firing squad. And that will be that. Now, do you want to continue to play hardball? Think that's harsh? Well, let me tell you something. If you think for a moment that our founders would have put up with what we live with every day by the abuse of bankers, politicians, mega corporations, mega industrialists, you're dreaming. 
That's not how they dealt with it. It was dealt with for the treason that it was. You know, our, our founders literally had fistfights in Congress. Now, of course, they show deference to my good friend from the other side of the aisle. <laughs> if you want this to stop, ladies and gentlemen, we have to change everything about government, including the fact that government is making these regulations that really don't affect any of the people that are paying their freight. It, all of these regulations are restraining our competitiveness domestically and on the globe. You, on an average, according to Mr. Cruz, your household alone pays $14,975. So let's just call it fifteen grand. Your household pays $15,000 on average in, a, in hidden regulatory taxes. That's 23% of the average income. At, and that's assuming income is 65.6, which it ain't. This is the fruits of your traders in Congress who pass things like Obamacare, who passed the Dodd-Frank bill, who gave the EPA the ability to control the air and the water outside of authority in the Constitution. The truth of the matter is, folks, we have gone too far for a political solution. And at some point in time, America, like the rest of the world, is going to wake up and realize that the only way to take this nation back is going to be to do it by force. You've been listening to America's Voice Now. Please share these programs with your friends. If you'd like to communicate with me directly, you can. You can send me an email to mike at americasvoicenow.org. That's mike at americasvoicenow.org. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash America's Voice Now. And you can also find every program that we do on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash America's Voice Now. You can also find our Spreaker program there. Please follow it and hit the follow button. Um, you may have to register to do that. Just register and hit follow. And um, that will help us get over the threshold of 100 so that we can begin to produce this program through uh, iHeartRadio. That is Spreaker.com forward slash user forward slash America's Voice Now. You can also download the podcast from there, and then you can also get, download the uh, uh, phone app. Uh, through, for your personal tracking device, sponsored for the, for you by the NSA. Okay, um, that's it for us for the day, folks. We're going to wrap up here. I I got to tell you, America, it's becoming so abundantly clear that everything that is being done to us is not for us. It is to us, and that we have become the enslaved. We are looked at here as a commodity. You are bought. You are sold. You are traded. And if you make too much trouble for the farmer or the rancher, he simply calls you from the herd. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but I don't think that's what this country was founded upon. I don't think that's what our founders intended for us. I don't think that's what you thought this was all about. And there's only one way we're going to fix it. There's no, there's no white horse that's going to ride up with some, shining, uh, with some knight in shining white armor on here. It's going to be us and only us. There ain't no one else. Make sure that you visit our friends over at Battery Station, one of our greatest sponsors. Uh, the friends over at Battery Station, you can find them at batterystation.com. They, uh, <coughs> they ship all over the country, one of the largest distributors of batteries and uh, uh, battery products and electronics. Um, make sure that you find them because they are a uh, they are a great place. You can you cannot beat their battery prices, especially on those one two three lithium batteries. You cannot beat their prices, and they have them private labeled and they're made right here in the United States. So you won't be buying stuff from China. Uh, make sure that you visit them at BatteryStation.com. You can also call them at 417-257-7799. Have a great day. We will see you tomorrow morning, bright and early. God bless. <laughs>